Okay, welcome to Arcana Inc. Hosted by Lakeside Legends, produced by Lakeside Legends. Yeah, I'm drawing circles to warm up my wrist. Um, but while I do that, I have the DM from our first Dungeons and Dragons campaign with me, David. Hello, David. hello. Thank you yeah. for having me. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to draw one of the NPCs that David voices and acts and creates uh, for our campaign. Did you pick who you wanted to do? I did. Uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping we can do Spit tonight. Yeah. Spit is one of my favorite characters. Mine too. Yeah, I actually did some preparing for uh, Learn too, so I could draw Spit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, cause goblins are a little different than people. So I went and actually, um, followed a tutorial draw along. And so let's look, I have, let's see. Okay. So here, you see it? Yeah. That's uh, not from Critical Role's second yeah, campaign. Yeah, it looks just like not. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. So that's kind of uh, what, I've, uh, what I did to prepare for this. Okay, this is different than, all right, I see it. So anyway, um, first step is actually to go and pick features that you feel like resonate with spit. So, first of all, do you see anything on this version of Knot that, like, fits with your idea? Yeah. So, I really liked, uh, one second, sorry, distracting things in the background. I really like uh, the long ears of the goblins. Uh, that's always a defining feature for me. Um, for me, my goblins would have a little more of a hooked nose. Okay. Instead of, like, a bulbous one, but the eyes very similar. Uh, a hood, of course, because Spitz always walking around with his little, uh, <laughs> his little blanket canvas. thing. Yeah, yeah. His, the, the the curtain he ripped off the wall at top uh -huh. the or the Stonehill Inn. Um, and then with Spit, because when I when I voice Spit, I have to like pull my neck in because that's just how I can get like my soft palate to to get up there. Uh -huh. So I imagine that spits kind of like this, kind of okay. like, like chin in, not necessarily no neck, but chin in. Chin in. Okay. Hey guys. So, okay. I was to make, doing a quick sketch note. So instead of his neck, like going in the way knots does here, it would be more out here. Yeah, the neck would either be further out or just like the chin would be further in. Like maybe he has like an extra roll. Like maybe he, his neck doesn't turn very well type of a deal. Okay. Okay, let's look at some other um, gobbies so that we can pick out some more stuff. So do you see anything on here? These are all very, this is just Pinterest. I just looked at yeah. the ones. Awesome. Do you... See yeah, uh, the one that looks like it's got like a drum and the tattoos. Okay. That one, yeah. So that's that's kind of similar with the long ears, uh, the the feet kind of exposed. Like I know we we established that Spit at one time had shoes and then lost the shoe, so maybe he's only got one shoe on. Uh, if we're gonna mm -hmm. go as far as to draw that far down, um, I think it's mostly gonna be a portrait. But portrait, okay, yeah, yeah no problem. So um, just like. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, so for the ear things, we want them nice and long, kind of a very, um, what was that movie? The Gremlins sort of ear. Yeah, definitely long. the Gremlins. Do you, mm -hmm. do you want them kind of flopped over the way I have them with this knot picture or are you wanting them um, kind of more like yeah. this or straight? I mean, I would think that Spitz, Spitz not really a uh, crazy, uh, type character like he's not a very strong goblin uh he's more kind of reserved and i imagine that would show in his features too kind of just like a floppy ear 
um, maybe maybe just a turned down type of nose, like, like nothing long and hooked or short. Yeah, and like kind. Of, well, probably short and hooked, but hooked down. Like like everything's kind of like droopy. Okay, droopy. Got it. Okay. Um, do you see anything else on this goblin that? Mm, maybe some earrings. Uh, mm -hmm. Like like okay. he might have one earring on like the tip of of his ear, kind of drooping. What kind of earring would he have? Just like a loop, like a gold okay. ring. Um, the goblins in my campaign like have a hard time getting stuff. Like they probably would have just stolen it off of. Uh, a merchant or whatever mm -hmm. and made it fit on their ear on their ear kind of like that what is it we fought that ogre that you threw at us yeah <laughs> he's just, just wearing that necklace of teeth or yes camera turned into a belt okay yep. um anything else um with the eyes i imagine uh they're probably yeah, I mean, I'd say like the pupils just like that, but like on knots or like on, on knots, yeah. Okay, so a cat pupil. Cats, cat's eye type thing, yeah, cat pupil. Are they big eyes or are big they... eyes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> hmm, well, you know, when I envision goblins, I envision them with smaller eyes, actually. Okay, so, so we'll I'd have... say spit probably has smaller eyes. Okay, spit will have small. Are they like long slanty eyes or kind of yeah, just like... Yeah, long okay. slanty eyes. Are they are they more almond or straight or down? Probably uh, probably like like this, like kind of mm -hmm. like... Um, slanted up? Slanted, yeah, so like the, like the outside elf. is up. Yeah, the outside's up and the inside's down. And also with, uh, with his hair, I'd imagine he just kind of has like, like a top knot type thing. Well, not a knot, but like a top braid that kind of goes down. So like a, a a mohawk braid? No, so so he doesn't have like much hair in the front at all. Okay. It's just kind of like a little bit in the back, and it's pulled into um, pulled into a ponytail that's kind of long. Okay, so it's a ponytail. Yeah, it's a ponytail. With kind of like. Um... Is it like a Sokka thing where the sides are shaved off and he just has a strip of hair or like when it, like a monk sort of thing where it's just that, like when you see more, in Chinese dramas where it's just that ponytail of hair and everything else is bald? More like a Sokka thing. Like he's okay. not bald bald, but he doesn't have a lot of hair. Okay, now is this a long ponytail or a short ponytail? Probably, probably longer. Okay, how long is longer? Like, like down to his shoulders. shoulders. Okay. Now, does he smile now that he's joined the group, or do you want him to be more sinister and like? Meh. He always has, <laughs> always got a frown going on, type of a deal. He's always Meh. frowning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Is he like a concerned frown or just like a? Okay, hold on. Just stay like that. <laughs> kind of like a job of the hut. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. We'll we'll play with the expression a little more. I'm just kind of switching right. it. So let's switch over then to um, my canvas. Right. Um, okay. So, do you see my sketch? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, this is what I got so far. It's obviously going to change. Yeah. Um, according to, you know, what we do here. But I don't know how to do this. Like, make your face again. <laughs> it's different because his features are so different. We're going to give him some TV, too. Okay. So let me pull up a new layer here. And just make him a little, oops, make him a little smaller. Put over here. Is that kind of ish what you were thinking? Yeah. 
sketch wise? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now. Okay. So which program are you using to draw this? Um, I'm on Clip Art Studio and this is the most basic one because I'm a cheapie. And That's I didn't okay. realize I was going to actually be doing so much um, actual art. It was more, it's more of a hobby. That's awesome. So, well, I mean, this this kind of kind of show viewers who are interested in art, like how much you can do with uh, like the simple basic program that Clip Art uh, Studios provides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to upgrade eventually since I'm getting more into this. But now this works for me. Now, is his neck short? Like you're always going like this. Well, that's yeah. like I just imagine it's in. I wouldn't say as a short fat neck. I would say it's still probably like a skinny goblin neck. He just doesn't have much of a chin. Okay. Kind of so more of a there. round face? Yeah. Like, okay, hold on. I'm going to switch screens real fast if I can figure. Just, okay. Well, let's look at what I have here. So it's not like, it's not like this guy. No, not necessarily. Okay, so he just has a, a more of a round face versus a... And not it's not like a pointy chin, it's kind of in. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know, not very descriptive, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's a good thing like, that you're... Like, like he has a double chin, we could say, like like a double chin type thing, but it's not as it's not like it envelops his whole neck like in that other one. Okay, then I'm real quick going to look up double chin people for a bit of a reference for myself. Okay. These are all like how to get rid of that double chin. I'm like, no, I need <laughs> have the double chin. Okay. So we'll give him more of a round, round face so that he can have this double thing. Okay. Um So when we first met Spit, did you mm -hmm. think that we were going to pull him into the campaign the way we did? No, I didn't. In all honesty, all of the goblins in that first episode all had names. All of them. I spent extra time kind of coming up with a bunch of stuff for all these goblins. And Spit was not special. He was just, you know, another one of those goblins that was there. Um, and you guys just happened to pick up on the one. You picked up on the one that didn't have like the coolest of names. Like all of them else had names that were pretty, like most of them had pretty creative names. And with them, like with Spit, I was just like, oh, there's this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and Spit. Like, <laughs> Wait, and... what were, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I mean, I can pull out the list of names if you want. Yeah, to... I'll pull out yeah. the names, I'm really curious. Yeah. That looks like a beak. <laughs> Let me pull up the, the d, d website and get a look at the uh, goblins they have. Well, I guess none of them had like, none of them had crazy good names, but like Spit just wasn't one of my favorites. Um, there was in that first <laughs> group of goblins, there was Goober, Gunk, Crunk, and Spit. Okay. And then you had Snot and Nut. Um, Let's see, where are the other ones? There was uh, Grip, Grack, Glish, Glunk, and Steve. That was another group of uh, guys. And then s I think you guys actually got this group. This group was Cy, Al, and Theo. But that's because I wanted you guys to know those names. So <laughs> I think I said them, and I don't know if you picked up on the reference. But wait, Simon, wait, say the names again. Cy, <laughs> Al, and Theo. I'm 
not the best with the pop culture sort of thing. So but Simon, the- Simon, Theodore, and Alvin. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> so yeah. I had. That, that was took like me way longer than it should have. That those were the the goblins up at the the twin pool caves where they kept like um, making the water rush down at you guys. And uh, yeah, so I think I think at one point during that episode, I said uh, one of them said, "No, that's Al or that's Theo or whatever." Uh, and yep, yeah. totally did not pick up on it. But all I... of them had names, <laughs> and we just happened to end up with that. Yep, you have an end up a spit. Now my NPCs don't really have. I mean, some of them have names because some of them, like in the campaign, they're given names, so you use them. Or there's sometimes I'll throw in my own character or move things around, mm-hmm. just because. So, and you guys just ended up with Spit for some reason, and Spit's a great character. Yeah, we love him. Yeah. We must protect Spit. <laughs> okay. Doing a better job of that than uh, certain other characters. What do you mean? I mean the the last episode we just had, we did not do a good job of, of uh, saving any character. Oh yeah. You know, you know when you went and did your DM thing. Yep. I know it. I know it. Well, Otherwise, it was great for my character, not so much. Well, I mean, I had planned for it, having like been your DM now for a little while. You knew I was going to do what I did? Uh, yeah, I knew your character. I knew that like, okay, she never talks. She freaks out and she kills everything in the room. Honestly, Imrelir ruined the Red Brand Ruffians because I had so many things planned in all those rooms and she <laughs> so just went in your, and killed everyone. This is your revenge? Yes, this is my revenge. Because it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of DMs feel that way, though. Like they spend so much time preparing something, and then, the, yeah, it just gets ruined. Oh man. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happens with D and D, though. I mean, the, the the DM prepares all this stuff. And you have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, you just hope things go according to plan. And you hope that you prepared enough. But what normally happens with you guys is that I've prepared way too much. And even the detailed stuff that I did prepare for each thing usually gets bulldozed. <laughs> so that's just kind of what happens. And then you guys surprise me. And you want to uh, you guys want to role play in town during an entire shopping spree with a whole bunch of stuff and try all these things. And I got to pull an entire episode out of my butt. So. Well, you have to uh, remember, we're a bunch of um, theater kids. And this is the only time we get to play improv. That's true. So, we, uh, I, I love the role play. That's my favorite part. How are these ears? Are they too droopy or do you want them longer mm, like I have probably, in the sketch? Probably a little too droopy. Uh, the ears you had before you put those, so they're a little longer, a little less droopy. Yeah, that, okay, that so looked better. Okay, so more in my sketch. Mm-hmm. Or, I guess this second. is still a sketch. Forgot to close my door before we started. Do you have any peepers? No, um, I think my wife uh, started playing Animal Crossing downstairs. Uh. So I heard the ba da ba ba da da da. I see, I see. Okay, how's that? Is that now too long? I'm going so, I'm exaggerating a little bit here. No, no, I like, I like the length. Okay. Mm. Wow, somebody's slamming doors out here. Oh, looks like we got a raid in the Twitch stream again. We do? The Natural 20 D&D is raiding. <gasps> Thanks, so guys. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. It's a DM, you always prep so much. And they don't stick to it. They don't stick to anything. But that's okay. Because <laughs> that, as, as DMs and as actors in heart, we are meant to actually pull things out of our butt and to do crazy stuff. And to just kind of let them go with it and give them an adventure that they think's fun, you know. And then I've I've researched a lot about DMing. This is actually my first time DMing a campaign ever. 
Um, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I researched a lot on how to do it and how to prepare and whatnot. And a lot of DMs, like a lot of DMs online, were saying you, you gotta just roll with it. You gotta do the best you can and let the characters take control or the, the player characters. And you know, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna be really sad when, when this saga is over and then a new DM steps in. Yeah, we're switching out DM. I think- We are. I think that uh, we're probably gonna end up doing just a hop around until we settle on somebody finally. You know, and I've even considered maybe um, like I was thrown around the idea. What if we had two DMs? What if we had two campaigns going? We could continue with this one and we can. You want to uh, keep doing this one? Well, I mean, maybe. maybe I mean, maybe. maybe. I'm enjoying it a lot. I like yeah. this campaign. I like my character. She's well, got you... some issues though now. You just well, made her issues a hundred <laughs> bazillion times worse. Well, but all of you have given me so much backstory on your characters <laughs> that have. I could make it a very rich story. That's but true. I mean, because right now we're just following the minds of Fandelver. We're doing a Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, like the starter campaign. And uh, it would be fun to either take that and have it delve into other Wizards of the Coast campaigns and kind of build your guys' stories. Like, I'm sure a lot of uh, DMs do that, and that's how a mm -hmm. lot of, like, uh, Dungeons & Dragons players play. But if I could kind of do that and mix mine in with theirs, like, that kind of gives everyone a taste of, like, what the Wizards of the Coast have planned and then what I have planned. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that would be a lot of fun. And because most of the campaign would already be planned, because it's in a book, mm -hmm. I don't have to. I don't have to plan as much. <laughs> I mean, I still spend hours planning, but not right, as much right. as I would have to do if it was homebrewed. That's true. Our other DM is homebrewing everything. He oh, is world. He is making up an entire world for us to play, and I'm so excited. I'm excited for the for our audience to view it. Um, mm -hmm. because of how much planning and stuff we're putting in it and in our characters. Oh, I'm so excited for my character. I don't want to spoil anything, so we won't say anything, but still. I've it's actually been be flip-flopping on my character and like what I'm going to actually play, but I finally yeah. decided I'm just going to stick with what I chose. Oh, man. I'm so excited for what I chose. Like, that's like crazy I want to cool. ask you questions about it, but I can't. I know. Not, not here. here. Not, not here. Not here. Sorry, guys. You're just going to have to keep watching. <laughs> and you're going to have to wait for our new campaign. It's going to be that, good, though. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, the new DM has been putting a lot of thought and effort um, mm. into his world. And I'm, I'm really impressed. It's going to be cool. Well, he was just talking to me about it today actually and apparently he has a lot of like side stuff planned so depending on what we choose to do this could end up being a long campaign <laughs> okay that's okay how are his eyebrows i just scribbled some in are they straight are they pointy are they doing one of these things where it's like i'd imagine uh, that he's he's kind of got a scar through one okay and then the other one is kind of looked like it might have been bur half burned off or something, or it's kind of like messy. Are they thick, thin? So thick, but the one has a chunk missing and the other side looks maybe thinner because it got slightly burned. Yeah, like that. And then a scar. Yeah, there you go. Does he have any other scarrings? Um, no, just the one on the eyebrow. Okay. And now is he, he's dirty though, right? He's a, he is. Spit is a dirty boy. Emma tried to give him a bath and he had none of that. He did not like it. No, he snuck out into the hallway in the middle of the night, found a planted pot and rolled in it. Oh, is that what he did? That's <laughs> we what were he all did. wondering, like, where did he go get dirty after we cleaned you know, him? I think I was going to say it, I was gonna, but then uh, you guys started talking and stuff and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to interrupt. We're sorry, so, we're such like, we're such role players. Like, that's okay, is, that's is what we his, do. Is his earring big or small? It's probably smaller. 
Not not huge. Or, there you go. Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna fix that though. It doesn't <laughs> look so good. That's well, okay. Then. I'll go on the inside. That's better. There you go. <laughs> that feels a lot better. Okay. Um, now hair on the side. Is it like shaved or is it? Um, so on his right side, it's shaved. So My right or his right? On his right side. Okay, so that would be, be your right left. Here. Yeah, that's shaved, and okay. it does, and it does on um, uh well, and then the other side probably shaved as well. Now that okay. I think about it, it's probably just shaved. Okay, so I'll make that lighter. Yeah, it's not like he's bald; just kind of shaved. Uh -huh. Like someone took a number two razor to it. Right. Okay. Now for a base, how is this? Is there anything you want changed? Hmm. Like he's not got much of an expression right now. Right, right. I'd say, well, no, he's got, he's kind of got like the, the frown going on. Um, you can make it more of a frown. Hey. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, no, that looks great. I'm loving it. Okay. The little lip. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we know that this is his double chin. Yeah, he doesn't have a giant fat lip. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Like, should he be more squinty? Yeah, more squinty. I like that. It just looks like he has fabulous eyelashes right now. I know, or, or nice eyeliner. <laughs> so he's turning into one of those Bishonen anime characters, reverse harem style. Yep. And he's probably got some like dirt underneath of his eye, one of his eyes. Okay. Just like a smudge. Because, you know, he's a dirty boy. He's not clean. Okay. Where else would he have dirt? His nose? Yeah, probably his nose, like a Ron Weasley smudge. <laughs> On the tip? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like that. Let's see, he probably needs some over here, too. Hmm, where else? Hmm. Probably on his cheek. I'm trying to, like, put the squinty thing. It's harder with his uh, his eyes. Okay, now it look now it just looks like he's looking up. Okay, hold on. I need to do the bottom one, I think. <laughs> there we go. I'm not like a super super duper experienced artist. Hey, the fact that you have been drawing since you were like 12. And you've been drawing dragons and stuff Younger since then. Than that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you. I remember some of those. I remember that first dragon you drew. I still like have that it. was that was crazy good. And then the I remember there was like a female warrior. I bet you anything you ended up basing your entire book series off of that drawing, and that was Elaventra. Actually, I based that drawing off of Elaventra. Well, you started writing that book. Like what? How old were you? Twelve. Yeah, you were 12. That's probably why yeah. I associated drawing with 12. So you've been writing books now for 16 years, 17 years. Oh my gosh, I'm so you, old. I know, so am I. Can you believe I'm turning <laughs> 28? I don't want to hear that from you, man. I'm two years <laughs> older than you. You're I am 30. <laughs> the oh. people who are older than us are like, you people don't know what <laughs> oh old God. is. <laughs> I know we'll get there okay. we'll get to old eventually I feel old I feel it in my bones I do the old man grunt Have you? <laughs> I do when I get up I go Ugh. so you sound and like dad I do Mackenzie hates it <laughs> she's like you're not supposed to be there yet yeah she's like why are you making old man noises I didn't marry an old man <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but she did. Okay, how's this? That's looking good. I like that. It's kind of like uh, he's kind of got that look that's like, eh, like not really caring. He's well, he's got the frown. The eyes are kind of droopy. That looks great. Okay, okay. So then, let me get rid of that. Holy fuck! 
turn you. Oops, that was the wrong one. Okay, now we're going into the line art. I still haven't really picked my pen for this, but we'll do this one for now since it's my favorite, right? This is second. Okay, that's too thin. I forget how big I make these canvases. Okay. So this is the part that I get a little insufferable with, but most people I feel like have a hard time with fine art too. I don't know why my pen makes this blobby thing. If somebody knows why I keep getting when I draw my line. I don't know why it does that. I don't know. It's a pain in my butt. See, like that. I'm just trying to make a beautiful line. And it makes it a big old like, fat line. Yeah. Well, it's just what it does is that it goes nice and straight. And then when I put any tiny pressure on it, it gets like fat and stuff, which is what I want, except the way it does it isn't as smooth as I want it to be. Mm. So I have to be so careful. I wonder if you can uh, adjust the setting on it, like the sensitivity. Yeah. I have, and it's kind of, see, I don't know why it goes in this big thing and then it turns into that pointy thing. Maybe I'll switch the pen. I'll just do this one. There you go. I mean, it's still doing it, but not, not as bad. Okay, hold on. His, his head head needs to be a little more over here. Here. Okay. That's better. I, you know, I've taken art classes in high school, kind of, and in junior <laughs> high. And I still have some of my like sketches and stuff, but I've never been able to do like good art like this. Like, I just, the amount of, like, effort it takes to do something like this just boggles my mind. Is something that takes a lot of practice. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> I mean, and I thought, like, I thought practicing piano was hard. I think practicing piano is hard. Oh, yeah, it is, but, I mean, I think this would be so much harder. I guess it depends on what you're like passionate about and stuff. Yeah. And what is worth the time and effort to you. That's true. Lately, I've been considering doing art, but yeah. I have way too much stuff I have to do. I mean, yeah, you're pretty busy. Yeah, I mean, trying to do this whole Lakeside Legends thing, uh, trying to like make music and stuff for our campaign and planning it. Um, and prepping for what you and I are going to do later. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just super excited for all that to happen. And it's taking up a lot of time. Yeah, I know it. I know it. But uh, all good things do, right? That's true. Nothing worth having is easy. Mm -mm, not at all. So what is line art compared to what you were doing before? So this bottom layer I have here is mm -hmm. um, just the sketch. Okay. Uh, try and just map it out. And then when you want it to look nice, mm. that's this is what you would put down before coloring it. Gotcha, okay. So it's like every time you redraw it, you get more and more detailed and finer mm -hmm. and finer in what you're doing. Refining it and going through, yeah. Doing okay. this chin part is actually one of the hardest things for me. Really? Yeah, I guess I don't actually have to connect it, so we can stop that right there. When you're drawing, about how long does it take you to do, um, like what you did for uh, not for the the critical role, not that you drew? How long did that take you? Um, a little over an hour, but that one because I was following a draw along a tutorial, it was easier because mm -hmm. somebody was doing all the thinking for me mm. and telling me where to put things. When I'm doing something like this, I have to remember the rules myself. Ah. So um, it's a little harder. And then 
when you do something like with this perspective thing. It uh, changes a lot. Yeah. Does swapping the orientation uh, help? Like when I flip the canvas like this? Yeah. Does that help yeah. a lot? Yeah. Um, depending on what hand is your dominant hand, I at least for me, um, it makes a difference. I prefer draw drawing on this side of the canvas because when I'm trying, like if I were trying to draw this eye over here, it would, I don't know. It's just, it's harder because I'm going up and in mm -hmm. a different direction. Okay. But, um, so for me, naturally, I, I want to make my arcs this way, not this way because of oh. my dominant hand. Yeah, just kind of what feels more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, technology is incredible that it has allowed us to do stuff like that right there's no way you'd be able to like orient a picture that you're drawing with a pencil yeah like having started out obviously with paper and pen because that was before the digital age right <laughs> at least before what i could afford it um flipping it was like yeah you couldn't do it so now, for Spit, how did you decide on his personality after we Shanghai him? Um, you know, that, that came pretty organically. Um, I played him off depending on how Kinsley and Imrelier were playing to Spit. Because uh, I noticed that you guys were wanting to kind of treat him like a little baby type of deal. <laughs> and you guys were wanting to protect him and take care of him. So he I... He was a kid. Well, I guess yeah. a, a preteen. But... Well, I mean, for a goblin, I mean, he's he's only like, uh, gosh... What did, I don't even remember what I said. You I think you didn't even want to bother coming up with an age, so Spit doesn't know how old he is. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. Just, that's right. That's what I felt like. What, what happened? Because I wasn't sure at the time, like goblin lore, how fast they age. So, so Spit was like relatively young, and for for his for whatever he was kind of like a preteen teenager type deal, but still had the mentality of a young person because he's only been alive so long so yeah um so he kind of fed off that he's never had you know a motherly person spit kind of grew up with a group of people that just told him what to do took advantage of him and and all of a sudden he runs into these people that he's come to trust that want to take care of him and treat him like a baby so he's so like he's feeding into that yeah it's like it's like he missed out on having a mom right so i feel like goblins probably don't really have that at least no. not in D D. yeah yeah no i mean i can't i can, the only lore i can think of with goblins that they were um able to do stuff like that more of like living in like a society type deal is like warcraft goblins right so they actually live in cities and towns and they're super smart and they're like the opposite of, or like not opposite but they're like the they're like gnomes where they're tinkerers type of a deal but it's more mm -hmm. like archaic tinkering so other than that most goblin lore is that they're like little barbarians right so, I mean, staying true to that, Spit comes from a, a culture that is pretty barbaric. Um, not that, you know, maybe they want to be in that kind of a culture. I mean, I think some goblins are different. Some right. Of them, some of them want to be in a positive place, and Spit happens to be one of them. And now he's with us. Mm-hmm. Like his eyebrows are a little too far apart. Even though Spit doesn't show it, he definitely is happy that uh, he's with people that don't want to try to kill him or fight him for food all the time. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, he's got the scar. At one point, I thought I imagined him with a chunk of his ear missing. Oh, really? But yeah, but at the same time, like, uh, I don't think. 
he would have been around long enough to have experienced something that harsh. Right. So okay. he probably got the scar from whatever it was and then never questioned again. Because uh, he does have that personality of like not being the, like wanting to fight, not wanting to like um, do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So at the very top of that, his head, is that kind of like a um, like a knot thing that's going to be turned into... It's his hella. It'll make more sense when there's color. That's I should okay. probably fix it a little better. Now let me actually pull another reference. Because if anybody thinks that authors are not authors, um, artists don't use references, it's a big fat lie. <laughs> well, yeah, everything's based off of something, right? Yeah. And you don't have like this library of information visually that you can just like pick off. You yeah. have to reference it. You know, it makes me wonder, like, who who was the original creator of these types of things? Do you think it was Do you think it was Tolkien? Um, well, I know, like, in fairy tales and things like that, they've always had these creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how they got descriptive, like how descriptive they were. Okay. Um, I know that Tolkien. He made it much more, um, I feel like, historical and, and medieval feeling versus mm-hmm. the fairy tale, like, sort of feel you get from, like, Brother Grimm stuff. Right. Um, but, like, who actually came up with the original goblins and things? They, that goes as far back as, like, Viking stuff. So Really? Yeah. Um, I, I did mean, not know of, that. Most of their stuff was more elven and giants and stuff. Right, because they had like Celtic stuff. Um, Viking and Celt is very similar, but not um, not exactly the same. Was it the Brits or the Nords who were trying to destroy the Celts? Because I remember the Celts, you're right, they are different. They're more of like a Scottish thing. Yeah, Celt is the more Highland. Irish and Scottish. Um, at least as far as I'm uh, aware, it's I'm I'm pretty sure it's mostly a Scottish Irish thing. There's also um oh, what is it called? Is it there's another Celtic group that's smaller and, and less well known. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but when it comes to more of a Viking thing, they're more Germanic mm, or like okay. Saxon sort of origin. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Celts and the Saxons, because I don't know, like it gets really complicated because you have all these tribes and things. So, uh, like there's the Picts, which are, I'm pretty sure were Scottish, okay. and they were basically the natives of that island. And then you had the um, Romans come over and like the and it turned into like Britain sort of thing. So there was a lot of, you know, your base um, tribal sort of groups and then they got taken over by this bigger group and then this bigger group. And so they went from this small thing to from like picked to now Celtic to now Britain sort of thing. I mean, I'm not an expert. This is just my understanding. And if somebody knows more, they can correct me. So. I only know hmm. a little bit because of my interest in that sort of thing. Right. And writing, using it for a basis on my writing. I don't ever write anything historically accurate. I just take inspiration from history. Okay. So, so all of my knowledge is pretty superficial. That's okay. I mean, a little bit of knowledge helps with the creative process. Mm-hmm. I remember I was watching some show on Netflix that was all about myths and legends and stuff. And I thought that show was so freaking cool. Like, I think it, it, is it Myth and Monsters? Yes, Myth and yeah, Monsters. Yeah, I watched that too. That show is so it's cool. Like, it's nice stuff for like inspiring stuff. Like you, you can take the creative liberties to make it your own story. And that's, I think, the beauty of these legends and things. Like if you read um hero of many faces 
by Joseph Campbell, he goes through in detail, like in fairy tales and folklore and legends and everything, no matter where it comes from, there's always this same kind of um, pattern that we follow because it reflects human nature and what we experience as humans. I think they that was there was an episode based on that of myths. Yeah, and, they talk monsters. Yeah, they talked about him. Um, some people agree, some people don't. I think he's brilliant, and I I have his book, and I'm, I'm I still need to finish it. But mm-hmm. anyway, okay. How does this look? That's looking so good. All right. So then, um, I really want to like clean this up, but I also don't want to take forever. So. Well, you can always clean it up off screen and we can post like a cleaned up version on our Facebook page and on our Twitter. Yeah. So what I think I'm going to do is, I mean, it's almost been an hour. So what I think we'll do at this point is choose colors okay, and then um, kind of lay them down here. And then I think we'll end it and then I'll just finish it off camera because I don't think people want to like watch forever this whole tedious process I mean if they do they can say in the comments eventually (laughs) I'll do an actual like step-by-step yeah of this but um for the purpose of what we're doing I think that for those who do you can hit us up on at lakeside legends on twitch or our facebook page and uh laura laura has her own handle stuff as well oh yeah i can write that down real quick yeah i mean are there people even watching still there are we got some people (laughs) um on twitch and a couple on facebook okay so this is my twitter handle so you can um follow me or just comment at me or whatever if you want a whole process like this is very (laughs) very basic and it's not going to look like this when I'm done um but for the sake of time and interest I think we're just going to leave it in this stage for now and just do blob colors all right so what what is Spitz uh uh skin color so I imagine my goblins like I know in most lore they're typically like a green color orcs and goblins and all them uh but with mine I imagine more of like a grayish like a gray with some green um maybe darker like a darker gray with some green in it um more of like what you would imagine a skin color to be like a yeah there you go something like that I know I'm brilliant. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) I no, I can't even say that I'm not that conceited because I kind of am. (laughs) Just a little, not all the way. Okay. Um, So is that a good color? Yes, that's a great color. I love that. Okay. Um, So then, what about his eyes? So the the pupils would probably be black, either black Mm -hmm. or red. Ooh. Yeah. Which one do you want? Mm, let's go like, red. Okay. Now is this like a candy apple red or a darker red? Or Probably what? more like uh, closer to like an orange red. Okay. So maybe a little more red. A little more. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah. A little more orange. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, don't let me erase that now. And I'd imagine he'd actually, so he would have, yeah, that color pupil, and then the eye color themselves would probably be like a yellow, like a dark yellow. So something over here? Like a goldish? Yeah. Like a goldish, yeah. Something like that? Mm hmm. Yeah. Like golden rod, I guess that would be. Like that. Yeah. And then his hair would be like a fiery red. Oh, really? Yeah. I always just imagined it black. Okay, fiery red. Uh, what constitutes as a fiery red in your heart? 
Uh, something that's close to like like uh, like a redhead, like a natural redhead. How it's kind of like orangey red. Okay. But maybe darker, like a darker orange red. Oh, that's a little too dark. Yeah, right about there. Mm -hmm. This actually um, kind of reminds me of an artist who does this Melkor and Sauron uh, comic thing. It's yeah. Hilarious. Um, it's all over Pinterest. I have it pinned everywhere on my on one of my Pinterest things. But nice. That looks so good. Okay. Uh, anything else? What color is his, is his earring? Is it actually gold? Would he have a gold earring? I'd say it's probably gold. Yeah. Like I okay. said, like they, they picked off merchants and stuff as they were coming That's by. True. So they would have had nice little trinkets, but wouldn't really have any need for them or what, know what to do. So when they actually find something they can wear, they're stoked. How, um, now, okay, I don't want him to look naked up here. Mm -hmm. So, real quick, what kind of clothes? Oh, did you say he wanted him to have a hood? Um, you know, I like this better without the the hood look, because we know that he just wears like like a, a, a beige the, blanket canvas yeah. thing. Like it's um, his hair is more like I'd rather have his hair. <laughs> okay, so then, um, what would his clothes look like? Um, so he would probably, he has leather armor. Um, mm -hmm. so I'd imagine it's kind of a torn leather armor. Torn leather armor. Yeah. So maybe like, like a regular collar looking thing, but maybe it's like, like there's a chunk chipped out of it. Like almost like a V neck looking, uh, neckline. Yeah, that one get rid of my handle for. So how high would it be? Not super high. Um, yeah, just draw and I'll say up or down. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put this specifically as male because they got some beautiful female stuff, but that's not what we're going for. Okay. Now, does he have anything on underneath it? Um. No, you know, I would say it's it's like a leather armor. Yeah, he doesn't have like like a uh, like a what do they call those peasants or blouse Peasant or whatever shirt. yeah what, what he... sorry he was looking a little like a giraffe yeah there you go so i'd say leather armor and then Maybe some kind of like uh, like a belt thing across his chest, kind of like how you see those um, like shotgun shell holder things. Something similar to that, but maybe just like a regular belt that that's how he thought you were supposed to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> so going like this way? Yeah, like that. And then have a, a belt buckle here. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And then if you go down to his wrists, he'd have bracers on too, but. Right. Now, how not... muscular is he? He's not super muscular. I mean, he's he's a fighter, but mm -hmm. at the same time, he does a lot of range stuff, um, a lot of support. He's a fighter because when I was trying to make him into a player character after you guys took him along with you, that's the easiest mm -hmm. one to make. <laughs> Got it. Or else he probably should have been a rogue, but. He's still got a little bit of muscle, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Probably should have done this in the bottom sketch, but it's fine. We're only gonna go like this far anyway. This is gonna be, oops. I think it does that. Okay, so that's gonna be where we cut him off, him. Mm -hmm. make it more like a bust. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It needs a lot of work, but this will be the um, the starting point. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's looking so good. Cool. All right. Is there anything, any other detail you want to add in here while mm. while we're here? 
that I can think of. What about his eyes? No, I mean, I can't think of anything else I really want to add. I'm not the detail person. <laughs> That's not my job, not the drawing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Then uh, I will play with him some more. Awesome. And, Get uh, more detailed out. Yeah, this is where we are at. That's so cool. That's going to look so good. Oh, I'm so excited to see <laughs> the result. Hopefully it meets all of your expectations. I'm sure it will. Right. So then, um, I mean, hold on. I've got some people. Um, so we can do this one of two ways. If you are satisfied, you can just, you know, does this still go if I, well, no, you're, you're hosting the whole thing. So sorry if you leave that's it okay um, but i mean if people want to see more we can stay i mean we can keep going i don't know is anybody in the comments talking about it i don't really have it up i'm focused on this does anybody um, want me to keep going or are they satisfied not that i can see okay. i don't see anyone say anything specific okay so then um yeah i'll just finish this up and then we'll post it on our officials or our socials okay. and then um, maybe share it this weekend when we stream yeah and then uh oh wait real quick what color leather armor is he wearing oh just like a like a regular brown looking leather armor like probably. camel brown oh you know brown. no probably like darker like it's like it's been through a lot kind of like a yeah like a ch not charcoal but just a dark brown. There you go. And the belt's black. Black belt. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So cool. So that's, I will play with this. So I'll make sure he looks like a smallish goblin. And All right. That will be it. So I think we're done. <laughs> that's awesome. It looks so good. I'm so excited. It's a scribbly mess, but I will make it beautiful. Hey, scribbly messes are awesome. I'll probably just go ahead and put, I don't know, critical roll on or a movie on or something and just keep working at it. Yeah. But, it's uh, been an hour, so I feel like that's decent enough. And then yeah. if people want more, if they have questions, um, then I'll have whoever is on here with me kind of manage the chat and then see if, if there's anything that they want to say about it or have any questions about either characters or the art process or whatever, so. Okay. Yeah, if anyone wants to reach out to us, we've mentioned all of our Twitter handles and Facebook pages and YouTube. You can go watch our D&D shows on there. Uh, Lost Mine of Fandelver. Lakeside Legends pre presents the Lost Minds of Fandelver. We've got eight episodes up so far. Well, seven episodes up. Eight will be up this next week because yeah. we just streamed it on Friday. And we stream every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so if you guys want to watch this, check us out there. Uh, yeah, and that's all I really have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, next week, I don't know who we're going to have on for character drawing, but some uh, it'll either be Kinsley, um, Francisco, me, or Imra, which is my character. So, yeah, that's what we've got. We'll do those characters, and then... Um, We'll start working on the second campaign's art. 
Mm, that's gonna be so much fun oh second campaign so you guys will get a glimpse into the characters and what they look like but you won't necessarily know who they are what their backgrounds are anything like that because we will have to be a little more hush hush when we do character descriptions and background people will not be as open as i was tonight oops sorry hit my mic uh people won't be as open as i was tonight about their decisions and why they're doing certain things and whatnot because this is pre-campaign so, stuff so yeah and there's only so much we'll be able to do with my character because honestly there's more to it so we'll have to maybe do like a a secondary and a secondary later on in the campaign yeah because of the change that happens yeah yeah yo 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 it's gonna be interesting <laughs> all right <laughs> all right so i think yeah we're good. That's it. All right. We have well, our base and I'll make it pretty. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching uh, another Lakeside Legends production. Um, and we hope to see you next time down by the lakeside. Bye. See ya.